No. No public places. Let's just go home. Uh, frankly, that surprises me. But, oh, shit. It fell in the hole. Oh, God. Thanks for having us. Doran yells from the other room. I didn't get the vibe that they were ready to move on. Trinieros and I had a disagreement. Jack's looking Kraloth up and down. And oh, I don't know. The dawn glow lasts until morning. You got some gall, Doran. I guess it's something to think about. By the hammer of Moradin. You've never seen him do it before, but he does it, like, instinctively. What's Jack's acronym for the... Uh... The B-B-B-E-G-G-G-R-S-T-T. <laughs> oh yes, that easy to remember acronym. Oh yeah, but oh. this is this is the right there. Welcome back to Day Shame. This is episode one thirty. Lay Bear MVP this week is Catherine or at Egalitaria on Twitter, who binged one hundred and twenty episodes in a month. Holy crap. Thank you for joining us, Catherine. We hereby declare that you are an honorary tabaxi. This week's shout out goes to Tales Yet Told, an incredible actual play podcast dedicated to telling weird and fun stories full of imagination, thoughtful characterization, and inclusivity. We had the chance to talk to GM Kendrick Smith last weekend as part of Invictus Con's AP panel. So if you're interested in some behind the screen goodness, go check that out too. You can find Tales Yet Told anywhere you listen to podcasts. All right, shall we do this? Yeah, let's play some D&D. Yeah! Day so the Nightstone 4 is huddled in this alley around this body. Some of you injured, some of you concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, confused. Confused, concerned. Who would want to kill us? Behind you, the marketplace is a buzz of activity, and silver-armored guards move through the market stalls asking questions of shoppers and trying to assess the damage and where the aggressors went. Red snaps his attention to Kraloth. He's like, we need to get out of here before the guards come. Come on, let's go. What? Let's just leave. All right. Come on, Doran, Jack. Oh. Why, why? Uh, Listen, the last thing you want to be is locked in a cell with someone who claims to be a god. Look, let's just go. And Red talks about this with sort of an informed certainty. Ah, you make a good point. Let's just uh, get out of here. Come on, let's go back. Doran kind of clings to Red's arm and and shuffles off with him. Kraloth leads briskly down the alleyways and starts making towards maybe one of the taverns. No, no public places. Let's just go home. Let's go back to Jack's mom's. Yeah. Sure. And we make our way there. Yeah. I hope Torin made it back okay. I'm sure he's fine. You actually see Torin's face looking out the window with a worried expression on his face. And uh, relief just washes over him as he spots you making your way down the street towards Kamara's. Happy to run to him when we get here just to make sure. Are you in one piece? I'm fine. Oh, thank God. (sighs) You're hurt, Doran. Yeah, yeah. I, it's sort of a, sort of an odd situation there. I wasn't expecting that in a in a local market, right out in the open like that. Mm. My body's still a little buzzing, and you look at his hand, and you can see it's like my veins are all really inflamed. You can see the, mm. the veins in my my body. Although I'm resistant to poison, it's still poisonous. Mm. You know, I took some poison damage there, so it's mm-hmm. like I'm jittering from it. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Sit down and take some rest, all right? Yeah, We're all going to okay. take a break here, one hour at least. And Doran, as he walks towards the uh, sitting area again, he he grabs um, a bottle of wine off the sideboard and cracks it open and drinks from the bottle. I feel like Kamara smart enough to like buy some cheap shit overnight and have it yeah. like, <laughs> strategically <laughs> in place. She's going to have to go to the liquor store smart. later. <laughs> <laughs> It made it an illusion to look like it's the fancy stuff. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Doran's checking. And he, he he takes heavy swigs of it and looks at the bottle with almost disgusted face and then shrugs and continues to drink it. <laughs> Knowing that it ain't the good stuff. But <laughs> Jack, what happened? I don't know. Ass- assassins of some kind. Looked like they were after Doran and Red. What? Maybe they just didn't get a chance to, to come after the rest of us. I I don't, we haven't really talked about it yet. I think it was just bad luck. Doran and I pissed off a few people last night. Maybe that was it. Look, we need to get out of town after maybe resting for an hour, as Kraloth said. Is there is there an insight role there? Go for it. One could make just to see if, if Red really thinks it's bad luck. Versus my deception. 
Yeah. Known for my... Uh, 19. Hey, that's not bad. Whoa. Ooh, th- versus 13. Yeah, so you can tell that Red doesn't think this was about last night. Mm-hmm. Definitely, we got to get moving Whatever those quick. things were, um, and Kraloth interrupts Jack and steps towards Torin, they could change their appearance. And a look of suspicion crosses Kraloth's face as he eyes Torin. Mm. Jack, you know Torin better than anybody? Why don't you ask him something only Torin would know? I mean, I, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be an issue. They can't change shape unless they've seen them before. And you made him invisible immediately, right? Yes. You know, Red, it would make me feel much more comfortable if, if Jack just did as Kraloth asked. Presumably they've been stalking us for a while, Red. I don't think so. But but sure, yeah, let's uh, let's see. Torin, why don't, why don't you tell them who the new business partner for the Copper Cup is? We haven't talked about that. Yeah, well, uh, so I um, I spoke with Masker about the Copper Cup and some of the issues that we had with, well, brigands coming in and Jack's father is going to be helping me with the business. It's just as a part owner, I'm still retaining um, ownership of... And, and Jack, anyway, Jack uh, kind of nods and, and puts an arm around Torin and says, nobody here should know that. We'd only talked about it just yesterday. It, it, it's proof enough for me. Plus, he would have to have taken Torn's clothes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Kraloth nods, satisfied, mm-hmm. and moves over to the balcony and steps outside and begins looking down the street. Mm-hmm. I think Red is moving around the place, collecting the things that we've kind of kept there over the last night, picking up the odd boots that Doran kicked off when we first arrived, <laughs> putting his baby Bjorn with shale right around his waist and stuff, like really itching to go. Do we even have a plan of where we're going? <sighs> Great question. Uh, yeah, I suppose we want to head south, right? To the last uh, to the last burial mound. And Red pulls out a projection of a map <laughs> with minor illusion, which again is excellent. He's not thinking about putting it on, so it's just a normal map with the minor illusion. He's like, uh, I believe the last one was around this direction, wasn't it? And he sort of circles the woods to the south. What is this tribe called or this location? What's Jack's acronym for the... Uh... The B-B-B-E-G-G-G-R-S-T-T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that easy to remember acronym. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's just how my... Brain, brain works, you know. <laughs> and Red says, look, we head south. Now that we have the portable hole, we can collect the last implement, put it in there, and then maybe head back to Everland and, and travel. Travel to uh, Mirapa, and then back up to the spine of the world. Mm, how many days until we're supposed to meet with our friend? He said he was happy to just chill out there. He thought it would be a great place to ambush giants as potentially they would come into the temple to pay respects, try to visit the oracle, and that he was... Happy to just, you know, lay and wait for them, kill them as they come to the doorstep, and just wait for you guys to, to come back. Mm. So he's happy there. We're not under any clock right now, necessarily, but I do think we should leave Silvery Moon as soon as possible. Understood. Sure. I'm done here. Yeah, well, this whole this whole thing has kind of got me thinking that maybe I should uh, do something about this flimsy little chain mail. You have magic armor. It's mithril. It's I know, mithril. I know. Yeah, but, but that's that's really funny. It's so like Dora to say flimsy yeah. little. But as, I, as I'm doing that, I'm kind of pulling at the little pieces. After that encounter, I feel like I would be wiser to have a little bit of, uh, you know, some something thick. Put it this way. Next town. I, I, I want to keep it on my mind. And Red, maybe pass me some of my gold coin. I, I owe Kralos five, five gold coin there. Six gold coin, Dora. It was six. Oh, sure. Yeah. Red hands him, whatever, a gold pouch with whatever amount he wants. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry we've got to leave so soon, Torin. I, I was hoping we got to spend a little bit longer. Didn't expect to get ambushed on the first day of the year. Yeah, I mean, w- well, when you think about it, really, this this whole meeting was not planned. So it feels like even though it was cut a little short maybe it's it still feels like kind of a present and i don't care what the vision said i'll be there in green grass we can we can have a little party together well yeah you said it yourself you don't know how to divine shit i'm so. real bad at it so we, we don't have to <laughs> trust nothing it, it won't be long we need to get you a, a pamphlet divination for beginners and he like goes through your your pocket and finds the flute music and sort of taps yeah. you on the chest with it we'll, we'll see how this does i'll uh 
I'll write you a song, maybe. Oh, you don't have to do that. No, probably <laughs> for the best. <laughs> and he embraces you, and you guys share a few minutes saying your goodbyes. Kraloff steps up to Torin, and as everyone's by the door getting ready to leave, he gives him a serious look and says, Be careful out there. There are people that will look like anybody, and maybe even Jack. And uh, you've experienced someone taking the place of Kieran before. I wouldn't want your trust to be damaged like that again. So be careful. Thank you for the reminder. That That's fair. I- I'll keep my wits about me. Uh, let's just do this to be careful. And Red looks towards just the five of us in the room. And he says, the dawn glow lasts until morning. That's a phrase that only the five of us will know. So, you can ask any one of us to repeat that phrase. Okay? The phrase? Is it an oath or a, the sign? The pact? Just a code. It's just a way to make sure that we know it's us. Mm. Harlan, do you have inspiration? I do. Would you like to give inspiration to another player? Because yeah, that's fucking smart. Thank you. I'll give inspiration. I think we all have inspiration. Yeah. I didn't get to eat. Torin has inspiration now. I'll take it emotionally. And again, it's interesting that Red comes with that quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, there's very yeah. little debate in his mind that that phrase is a way to decipher any information. Obviously, tell it to no one. And he looks dead at Torin very seriously and says, no one. Mm. <sighs> anyway, do you think your mom can get Torin home? Oh, I'm certain. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll just go say goodbye quick and then we can head out Mm -hmm. jack you know walks up to his mom's office and and gives her like the the 30 second recap of like ah we gotta go the market sucked this morning Uh, (laughs) didn't have the fruit i want (laughs) understatement of the century yeah uh doran died red died (laughs) yeah they're okay now but (laughs) (laughs) they got better (laughs) got better just a flesh wound I'll try and come visit more often. This was this was nice. Thank you for coming, Eve. She holds you tightly and her hand makes circles on your back. Just for a minute, she says, you're never too old to be held by your mother. Thanks for having us, Doran yells from the other room. <laughs> There's just a crash as another table breaks. It's not clear. <laughs> <laughs> all the weight of the stuff on it, just like... <laughs> Yeah, you it's, hear I'll, it. just, it's I'll just so set the fragile. shield and mask out here while I set up the, the portable yeah. hole. And oh shit, it fell in the hole. Okay. I already put the stuff in the hole. And Red has kept that in mind too to head to the waterfront to grab the bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You retrieve your artifacts without any issue uh-huh. and leave the city of Silvery Moon behind you, traveling this time by foot on land, the southern road. You're not the only people to be leaving Silvery Moon on this road. Obviously, there are many travelers, merchant caravans. Yeah, Red's trying to make sure that no one's following them. And, like, eventually he'll be carving off the main path to try to head south. We'll be kind of taking some of the back roads. I'm a ranger, so I feel like when we're in the woods, I can be trying to decipher trails, maybe hunting trails and things like that. And then when we get to a point where it makes sense that no one would be following us, he'll spend a good long time watching to see if anyone is following. Interesting. I was on a hike last weekend with my family. and Tell I was us all about it. Pulling up the rear, and I was thinking about my position as Doran in our podcast and how I do always bring up the rear. You know, just kind of how I, I... An anchor. Yeah. I'm And I, and where I'm going with this is, yeah. So I, I'm walking in the back now, and I do constantly kind of keep my eye behind me, Um you know, and aware of stuff. Awesome. Cool. Bring it up the rear. You don't observe anyone following you, Red and Doran, both of you combined. Mm. Are we watching for someone specific? Just want to make sure none of the uh, assassins are on our tail. Yeah, I mean, it It would be weird if they were, if it was a random act like you were saying, or from stuff you kicked up last night. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody want an apple? Oh, I love one. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yep. Here. Here. <clears throat> thank you. Mm-hmm. And eventually, Red sort of nods and starts taking the lead again as we head south. We're eating mm-hmm. apples and walking on snow. 
Double crunch. You know what everyone loves most about our podcast is the Crunches. sound of the people, people eating. eating. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Jack ends up kicking his feet a little bit down the road and, and um, so, so uh, I guess Everland's next next ahead of us, right? We could, we could probably break east from there back to Jalanthar and then head south to the, the corner of the woods if we wanted. Mm. Um yeah, I never got to buy any health potions, so I wouldn't mind stepping in, Evelyn, and getting some. Plus, checking on, uh, I suppose, the bakery we set up. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to know that uh, Calliope made it or not. Maybe we'll run into her on the road. Are there stronger potions you can buy? Yeah, well, when I was at the apothecary, he was telling us there's some greater healing potions and uh, some superior healing potions. At the very least, I think we're done with the first tier, and I, I want to mm. at least carry only greater from here on out. Mm. I mean, there there is something to the fact that we've got that hole there. It, it's not impossible for us to set up a little apparatus in there. Perhaps we could figure out how to distill those healing potions into something stronger ourselves. You know, with, with some time, if we pass that along, it might be. I wouldn't mind buying some sooner. Oh no, I I, underst- I understand. I'm just just dreaming for the future. I like the breadth of your. Thoughts. You have those abilities, Jack? You ever do potion crafting, alchemy? It's just following a recipe. Oh, maybe I'll take a crack at it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a little it's a little more complicated than that, but yeah, it, it, we, I'm sure we could figure it out if we found all the right pieces. All right, we can make them taste good too, because the, the the current potions they don't taste very. They good. They taste awful. In fact, they they're disgusting. <laughs> that is your specialty. Yeah. Yeah. And as night draws on, you begin to. Try to find a place to camp safely. I imagine that there is a river that runs south along this road, uh, the road being on one side. I think we've crossed when the stream was shallow, mm-hmm. and we're sort of walking along the far bank within the edge of the woods. And every once in a while, Red sort of cuts back towards the tree line, which can view the road to make sure there's no one sort of keeping pace with us kind of coming out of the trees and looking at the road that's on the other side of the river and then heading back in mm-hmm. so that the stream actually is between them and the road. Right. She's right. very on edge about everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And Kraloth, as the sun goes down, Kraloth's demeanor kind of changes as well, where during the day he was relatively jovial. At night, he seems to, it seems that the day is kind of catching up with him and he's more subdued and quieter. Doran's pretty quiet along this trek, too. He's got a lot on his mind with uh, going back into Everland and being reminded, because of this close proximity to Jalanthar, being reminded Mm -hmm. of the the dwarves there in Captain Chaos Hammer. You know, we never really did follow up with Captain Chaos Hammer and the the dwarves in Jalanthar about that, that citadel. We were supposed to. I don't know. I feel other things came up. Uh, it happens. We're not paid messengers for the dwarves or Chaos Hammer. We're not. We have other duties. This is just other things that. It's not our responsibility, Doran. You can't beat yourself up over that. You didn't know. We we dropped in. We dropped out. Not a big deal. As Doran's making the the fire, maybe Jack setting up Liaman's tiny hut, sort of giving mm. us this this cozy safe space to to spend the night just on the edge of the woods. You know, I think he's he's relatively unburdened compared to the rest of you uh, mm, for, for a yeah. change. Mm. Uh, for once. He's right? got the like hunt lord mark off him. So. Mm-hmm. Right? Like it, I think it's cool. I, I see Jack putting up a hut and then like thinking it's like this beautiful, you know, kind of quaint hut. And then he snaps his fingers and then it changed to like an elven themed style. And then he like tilts his head and he snaps his finger and it changes again. I mean, it's all about trying to figure out what color scheme do you put on it now. He's What's getting a little bit creative What's and artistic with it. What it's uh you know, Paisley pattern. Yeah, which you know, there's there's a little bit of camouflage in that, but also there's some artistry, some design. He's he's uh, thinking about going to the Copper Cup sometime. It's just having kind of a nice humming along to himself for a moment as everybody else is grimly looking at a fire. <laughs> well, Kraloth is lying on his bedroll. He's got his his arms back, and he has he's not really helping with the campfire. He's not cooking anything. He's just kind of chewing on some jerky. And um, uh, Jackson is next to him eating a little bit of jerky as well. And he's got Thaumaturgy going. And Thaumaturgy is playing some music from (laughs) back in the Copper Cup that we heard, you know, ages ago. It's just kind of like a radio. Nice. I like that. That is nice. So Doran gets the fire going, small at first, and then he drags out some massive logs from the the woods. 
And you guys are still on that other side of the river right now, right? Correct, yeah. And Red, while everyone's doing this, he's sort of just perched, you know, sort of on the outside so the light of the fire doesn't obfuscate his view and he's just kind of watching the woods for a while. Mm. Feels like everyone's kind of doing their own separate stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bit awkward. Wish I could play the flute like that, Jack says to Kraloth as the music plays across. Mm. That water deep's really got a style, you know? No, maybe you should take lessons from Oren. He could probably teach you a thing or two. Oh, man. I'd love to go to the Hamp Rat House now that we're not worried about being followed. Mm. God, we could use a vacation. I hear that. Red walking back to the fire, like, kind of chimes in. He's like, yeah, I'd like that too. Maybe when we're back from delivering these things to the Oracle, take a much-needed break. I don't want Hoshnag to think we forgot about him. That's when Dorian kind of sits down next to the fire. It's now constructed and burning nicely. And he, and he's pulled out some stumps for you guys to sit on. Like, you know, this is like, Doran sort of not just built the fire, but built a setting for us to relax mm-hmm. for Aww. an evening, just the four of us for once. And Kraloth looks over, sees the stumps, and kind of reluctantly rolls over snaps his fingers, the music stops, and goes over and sits next to the fire, warming his hands. Mm. It's a nice-looking fire, Dorn. Not too big this time. You know, we never did get around to uh, going to visit the Citadel in the... Yeah, you were mentioning on the walk down. I think it'd be worthwhile of us to go and check on the town of the Jalanthar. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe the dwarves have done their own thing maybe they've maybe they've moved on maybe maybe everything's fine without us touching it but i didn't get the vibe that they were ready to move on unfortunately well neither did i but that was a couple weeks ago and we we told them that we'd back be back in about a month you know i wouldn't be surprised if well what what do you mean clearly those assassins were after me in silvery moon i mean who's to say i i I would why were they after you well, you know, I'm just saying I was the only one that really that, that was attacked right on the onset. They sought me out, and, and there's something there. I, I'm not really sure why, but... Uh, why would someone want to kill you, Doran? Is there some reason that people would have it out for you? Well, I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, dwarves aren't exactly always aligned in the most friendly way, and those dwarves in Jalanth are Captain Chaos Hammer and his... Just tell them, Doran. They have some... They should know. When we were in Jalanthar, well, the, the dwarves, they, they tried to blackmail me, saying that they were going to bring up, you know, my past, the my, my faults with the various you know, situations I've been in. And mm. Well, you know that. I've told you about that, and people have died. Well, anyways, they wanted me to sign a document on behalf of the Nightstone 4, admitting that we were we were there supporting them in what they were doing. And I... And I I tore it up and I threw it in their faces. Of course, it's insulting, but again, I, I don't think... <laughs> you threw it in Chaos Hammer's face? Well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> no, this this dwarf doesn't exactly take it lying down, Kralon. We you were surrounded by enemy dwarves. There were about 25 or 30 of them, all easily equally as strong as we are, and Chaos Hammer, who is a legend, and you threw it in the motherfucker's face. <laughs> That's what you're telling us. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, maybe when you put it like that, it doesn't, doesn't sound so smart. You got some gall, Doran. Some gall. Well we, well, we walked out, all right? Oh, Doran, Doran, Doran. You just made my night. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Finally, someone someone has a laugh around here, I mean. And so you're thinking that we should go back to Jalanthar. We should all just go back to Jalanthar and say, hey, it's no big deal. It's all right. Yeah, sure, I insulted you terribly, and maybe you sent assassins out for us, but it's all right. We're all friends, right? Let's not worry about this. Oh, and you've had lots of time to prepare your defenses and forces. Oh, that's looking real good. You mind if we stay the night? Doran crosses his arms, looking a little bit shocked almost, and that he's been put put on the spot like this. (laughs) Yeah, well, at least I'm not dead, right? What's that feel like? Obviously, you have no soul anymore. A devious grin crosses Kralos' face, and kind of a darkness overtakes him. And he looks Doran in the eyes, and he says, Doran, it's all just a big joke. (laughs) I got something for you all. 
And Kraloth stands up and he goes back over to his bedroll, opens his bag, and uh, brings it next to the fire and places it by his feet. <clears throat> and he says, Doran, you deserve a, a gift for all of your ridiculous pride and bravery, I suppose is what I would call it. And he reaches into his bag and he pulls out a stone. And Doran, you recognize it as the stone that uh, that he picked up from the, the quarry. And it's a, a beautiful, just kind of jagged geode type of thing. Mm. And it's got this neon, these neon veins that kind of glow when the light reflects it a certain way. And he passes it over to you, and it's surprisingly light and, and soft. Uh, do you know what that is, Doran? Doran kind of looks at it as if he doesn't really care. He's a little bit taken aback by the whole situation. And I don't, I don't know what it is. What, 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 what am I looking at here? I know where you got it. I can tell you that much. All right. Well, I'll tell you. This is a piece of what they call Eldritch Soapstone. I'd never heard of it before this morning. But it is a really nice stone that is very soft and easy to carve. And he reaches into his, his bag and he pulls out that little stone carving knife and tosses it to Dorm. Since you're away from your forge, I figured you might need to do something with your hands and create something. So I wanted to get you this. And um, uh, I hope you like it. You bought this for me? Yes, I bought it for you. Jack. Kraloth reaches into the bag again, and he pulls out a little bundle. I was going to get it wrapped for you, but uh, here. And he hands it over, and it's a notebook. And it's on a really nice um, animal vellum. Mm. And it's it's completely empty inside. And he says, it's uh, pretty rare, I think. It's, it's called a drake skin vellum notebook. I know you've got tons of them, so it's just another one to add to your collection, but... Maybe this one's just a little nicer to write on or something. Can never have too many. Uh, thank you. And then uh, Kraloth reaches in one last time, and he looks at Red, and his tone kind of gets serious for a second. He says, Red, I got you something, too. Yeah? And he pulls out this package, and he hands it to you, this wrapped package. Red takes it, and before you talk to him, Red was still sort of scanning the edge of the woods, and he sort of snaps back. You know, despite the sincerity and the seriousness of the conversation, especially between you and Doran, Red's still sort of trying to mm. keep an eye on the trees. And he's like, oh, oh, thanks. Thanks, bud. Uh, what is it? And he unwraps it. And inside there is this really ornate, beautiful glass knife that's clearly done in elven style. And you can see through it the the... The blade is kind of a translucent, milky white. Cool. And Kraloth says it's a sylvan ghost knife is what they call it. And uh, no magical properties or anything like that. But if you catch a rabbit or any animal for that matter and decide to skin it, it should take the skin off like butter. Wow. Kraloth, that's... Uh... And Red holds the dagger and like spins it in his palm and catches it again. You know how like really cool people do those knife tricks? <laughs> You've never seen him do it before, but he does it like instinctively. It's perfectly balanced. Wow. Kraloth, this, uh, this really meant a lot. You didn't have to spend all your gold on buying us presents. I mean, that's... Oh. I didn't realize that's what you wanted. I I'm sorry I give you a hard time for it. Hey, don't worry about it. And Kraloth stands up and he's, he says it in a way that's kind of like... It's not, he he just really brushes that off as like a, it's not a concern at all. And uh, he stands up and he says, listen guys, you all know this, but when that demon came through, whatever tear there was in the in the, the veil, the shadow fell, that demon came through, it killed me. It, it legitimately killed me. I didn't understand why I came back to life. And things have been different for me. I don't know exactly how to put this, but um, Kelimvor... Has, has abandoned me. Jeez. It's almost a look of recognition in Jack's eyes like he'd been suspecting or something. But it's not all bad. <laughs> it's not all bad. I, I'm, I may be done with Kelimvor, but um, some really interesting things have happened since then. And um, Red, you do me a favor. Yeah. Stand up. 
Kraloth takes Red and kind of positions him kind of next to the fire. Yeah. And um, yeah, sure. And he stands in front of Red and says, whatever changed me has granted me with some, I guess, interesting abilities. He holds out Red's hand with the knife. Very gently, he brings the blade into his stomach. Ooh. I think Red fights him at first. He's like, no, Kraloth, what Relax, are you doing? Red. Stop, stop. Let me show you. And he pulls the blade and it sinks into his gut. But Kraloth doesn't flinch. And then he brings it out. And you hold this knife in your hand that has no blood on it whatsoever. Oh, what the hell happened? What By happened? the hammer of Moradin. What, is this the ghost knife? Is this what it does? No, it's not the knife, Red. It's me. <laughs> Red immediately starts stabbing Doran to test. <laughs> ah, hey, it's totally get away going through him. That. <laughs> like butter. One of those trick knives yeah. where the blade goes back into the handle when you stab. Red, Doran, Jack. I'm undead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kraloth, I, 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 I listen. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, di- I didn't mean to say it. I, I, I look. It's I, all right, Dorn. I wasn't expecting an apology right off the bat, but I wanted to tell you guys as soon as I knew, and decide whether or not you want to continue with me. Well, what does this mean? What, what do you? Mean? Of course, we're going to continue with you. What are you? You're still Kraloth. I just. I don't understand. I mean, uh, uh, frankly, that surprises me. Um, but yeah, and when Red says so surely that, that he's going to continue, I was, Kraloth looks confused, but he says, well, I, I can answer any questions you might have uh, about how it happened. Um, for starters, the, this shield... And Kraloth walks over to his bedroll and picks up his his phoenix shield. Uh, there was a uh, an ability on it that that would bring me back from the dead. And you you saw that this 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 magical item was able to do that. Well, what we didn't know uh, is that it was cursed. The way it brought me back was it brought me back like this. My God, I, there's so many facets to this world. I just uh, I'm just I'm, I'm flabbergasted, quite frankly. How do you know that Kelimvor just turned its back on you? How, how does your... For days now, I've tried to reach out to him. After my demise, I prayed any chance I got. And I know what it is like to be connected with my God. That's where I draw my powers from. And he w- was no longer present. And I spoke with my captain uh, about it um at that red looks towards kreloth's hand does he see the ring oh the ring is gone yeah and i think red almost subconsciously paused the ring that he found on the street that's in his pocket now he just rubs his hand on the outside of his pants thoughtfully trineros and i had a disagreement while i still intend to complete my mission and free the souls of my squad um I'm no longer serving under the Captain Treneros or under Kelimvor. For to them, I am an abomination. And the wild thing is that a week ago, I would have been an abomination to myself as well. Well, look, nothing's going to change the way I feel about you or Doran. Jack's looking Kraloth up and down, and, and he's not actively taking notes in his brand new Drakeskin notebook, but you can see him organizing information into lists and sorting it in his in his mind. Like he's he's certainly weighing things up and down. Jack throws it on the fire and walks away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kraloth, who do you serve? It's a good question, Jack. And a smirk forms on Kraloth's mouth. Frankly, I am surprised that y'all are taking it this way. I was certain that we were going to have to part ways. I was more than ready to, to move out on my own, even though it's much less convenient. But And Kraloth sits back down, learning that one of your compatriots is a monster, is, uh, well... Well, look, Kraloth, I, I wouldn't call you a monster. You're still yourself. Mm. You're still our friend. You're still my friend. If you feel like, at the end of the day this would change the way you act towards us or about us, then maybe that's a different conversation. But from what I can tell, this doesn't change anything. I just have one question. Are, are we to trust you? What do you mean trust Kray? Of course we can trust Kraloth. Uh, why even ask that? That's 
Doran, he's still Kraloth. You don't need to ask for his trust. He's done nothing, nothing to us to imply that he's not got our back still, right? Mm. And Kraloth turns to Red and unseen to the rest of the group, he grips his mace and a smirk forms on his face and he looks Red in the eye and he smiles and nods. And then he turns to Jack and says, her name is Rael. She is the goddess of broken things, one of which I am. She takes souls who are lost, forgotten, battered, bruised, and brings them back, helps them find purpose when the only purpose they had known has been lost. How does she feel about fixing things? I don't know. You'd have to ask her yourself. How do you feel about fixing things? Why do you ask? It's a strange question. We're, we're trying to fix a whole bunch of broken things. Is that something that the God of broken things is going to stand against? Is your, is your purpose at cross with ours now? No, I don't think so. I think that taking broken things and finding uses for them, finding purpose for them as broken things makes them unbroken, does it not? Doran looks down at the piece of soap gem stone thing that he's holding. I guess it's something to think about. Jack's in, in his list in his head, certainly. Not having enough information, I think he's he's trying not to, to make a hasty decision about anything or decide how he feels too, too quickly. Kraloth jumps to the occasion a little bit, and seeing that Jack is a little bit hesitant, he says, Look, Rael took me when I was at my worst. I had just found out that to my god, Kelimvor, the one who I had served for my entire life, I was an abomination and that I should end my existence. Rael came and told me that I still had a place in Faerun. She told me that I am still worthy and she gave things back to me. My appetite, some of the things that I love about this world that we live in. Now, maybe that's not fixing things, but it definitely makes life feel much more colorful. And I think that's something worth celebrating. I'm glad you're suffering less. Well, if that's all, I'd like to turn in and get some rest. Yeah, I think I'll take one more walk around the perimeter to make sure that uh, no one's following us, but uh, I think that's probably a smart thing to do. Hey, uh, thank you guys for not abandoning me. Like my god did. Well, thank you for your uh, honesty. And again, Doran's looking down at the piece of gemstone that's been given to him and he's recalling how Kraloth had stolen a bunch of stuff from us <laughs> weeks ago <laughs> and and given it to an imp. Yeah, good, yeah. good connection. But he doesn't he doesn't bring it up though. <laughs> he's like uh, that's better left un- unsaid. <laughs> and Red stands up and dusts off his pants and says, "All right, I'll catch up with you guys in a, in a little bit." And he starts walking off to the darkness. Maybe I'll join you for a perimeter walk, Red. Sure. Jack's sitting up around the fire thinking for a little bit longer, but his bedroll's not far. He's kind of got Kieran's head in his lap, just kind of yeah, pondering his new undead friend. As Jack is sitting with Kieran and watching the fire, you see behind him Kraloth on the, the bedroll. And one of Kraloth's eyes opens just a crack and looks at Jack as he's sitting there. Just watches him for a moment. Red and Doran are walking the perimeter and you can see Red's distracted, but not for the reason he was before. And he's sort of looking around the woods as Doran sort of trods on along beside him. What do you make of all that with Kraloth? Well, I mean... It's pretty heavy news. I've never ever really known someone that's been undead before. Hell, I barely know anybody that's been magical. And now I and now I've been thrown into all this. So, I don't know. 
it's I, like you say, it's still Kraloth. I, we we could still trust him. I mean, he he almost seems he almost seems I don't know more trustworthy now. I mean, he, that's what makes me nervous. I don't know. He always seems so straightforward, but there's something behind those eyes, a deviousness that I I just. I don't know how to place. Mm. I can't tell if it's him experimenting with how he truly feels or, or what. But uh, you nailed it, and Jack did. We don't know enough about this. And to my mind, and he reaches into his pocket and pulls out the ring, there's only one person that I think might know more about this. Hey, is that... That's the ring that you found. Did you notice Kraloth wasn't wearing his? It's not. Don't tell me that's Kraloth's ring. I'd like to check with one other source. And he slips on the ring. Thank you once again to our wonderful Patreon supporters, Christopher Ryan Evans, Alexander Reed, Merlin, Mitchell Cadwell, Michael and Brianna Weber, Brian Blass, Heather Nichols, Colin Burkhart, Daniel, Kara Smith-Blass, Doug, Gray, Jackie and Rain, Jessica Orrit, Jonah Goldman, Melanie Xian, Lars, and Mari Kaniski. See you soon! Jack lets out a big fart. He's like, oh, thank God I've been holding that till the guys left. <laughs> I did not want to do that. Finally, a private moment. Smells do not permeate Liam's tiny hut. No.